Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuning into the Beauty and Violence podcast, where four guys get together from different worlds with one common purpose, their love of MMA. I'm John Jobs. I'm joined by Rose and Jem. And our fourth Chris is somewhere lost in Colombia. We wish him well. We hope he's safe, which we're probably not. But <laughs> we're here to talk about last night's UFC, which was amazing. Let's start Hell with yeah. the main event. Marvin Vittori, the Italian dream. Oh, my Lord. What a fight. What a fight. What do you, what's, what do you guys think about that fight? All right, so I thought that would have been a, I mean, because it's a late replacement, I thought it would be kind of a, a bad matchup for, um, what's his name? Uh, Jack Romanson? Uh, Jack Romanson. The Joker? Like, I thought Joker would, would win. Like, that was my original prediction. But I thought, like, you know, he would throw a wedge in there somewhere. But it was proven to be even more of a bad matchup when it actually happened. Main, I think it's mainly because... Um, what's his name? Jack Hermanson didn't get a chance to like really prepare for that level Style. of boxing. Yeah, yeah, that that level of boxing um, is is mainly the problem. But yeah. I'll say this though: Jack Hermanson um, did better in striking than I thought he would have done. Like I'm just I'm looking at him. I'm like, wait, when did Jack, Jack Hermanson get this dangerous? With his hands, like he was throwing some savage combination. He yeah, threw. A it took him a little bit, but yeah, he started. Yeah. He started pretty. No, but he threw a combination that I seen Izzy throw. Like, like Izzy, Izzy threw this combination against Kelvin Gaslam. Like when, you know, when Izzy like got the glow, and and like like in the fifth round, and, he and like he got the glow in the fifth round, and he threw that ridiculous combination. Like like um, but anyway, Jack Romanson like kind of it, it's crazy because I I feel like. Jack Romanson is not going to get enough credit, but I think he overachieved in that situation. But mm. but it's just that you know, um, I don't know. It, in, in their natural styles, um, what's his name was just a bad matchup for Jack Romanson. I can see that. What about you, Jen? Well, oh, you first, John. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought. When I first heard that Vittori was the favorite to win, it blew my mind. I was just like, wait a minute, whoa. Now, it's not any disrespect to Vittori. It's just Hermanson's body of work speaks for itself. He's an incredible fighter, you know? He, and he's been ready for this fight. Not this fight, but to fight, you know? But it was just like, I, I realized, because you know you, you know me, guys. I, I It normally hits me either the day of or in the face of where I really see, where I realize, oh, crap. And when I saw that face-off between him and Vittori, Vittori just looked like a man on a mission. And we all know he is, but it was like, oh, man, this is going to be a tough fight for Hermanson. And the second it started, I said, oh, boy, this is going to be a long night. <laughs> and I'm glad it was because all five rounds were amazing, amazing. It was just like an emotional roller coaster. It was great. It was a great fight. Great fight. I mean, when, I'm happy when... for Vittori. I think he's going to pose a lot of problems for a lot of guys. Um, he's... He's good everywhere and kind of, you know, like he's he's a yeah. really good, well-rounded fighter. The, honestly, the the one thing that I n didn't notice was that Vittori is a guy who rises to the occasion. So I knew that he would be more prepared than ever before. He's hungry. You can see it in the face-off. He's like jumping around, energetic. Like he has that hunger and fire to be champion. So I was surprised too to see that um, he was the favorite. I was surprised. But um, I never have seen a replacement. Yeah, be a yeah. Favorite. But he proved he proved that he's ready for anyone. In my opinion, I agree, a hundred percent. I agree. Yeah, he's, it, he's it's a, crazy. The crazy thing is, like, I thought I, I saw him start to like like really like uh, gas and and like as early as the second round. So I was like, okay, I think Jack Hermanson is probably gonna make a comeback at this point. But then it's like he finds more energy in the fifth in. Like, even in the fifth round, he had more energy than he had in the second round. So it shows you that you could kind of, like, like regather yourself and get your bearings. Like, um, mm -hmm. even when you're, like, the, the worst, the worst like, tired place. Man, that was crazy. And then um, you heard him You heard him in the post-fight interview where he was just, they were talking about, you know, your bruises and stuff like that. He's like, he's like, the bruises are fine. He's like, I like the bruises. It's like, this man just fought a five-round war and he was still ready for more. Like, he's a scary, scary dude. I'm excited. I'm excited for what's next. He likes the feeling, apparently he likes the feeling of earning something, which mm. the thing is, the thing is all of like in life, we all want to, we all like the feeling of like, oh, like, like you earned it. But like how many people are willing to actually like go through it to mm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like people, it. yeah, it's different. 
Um, and the way they talk about him, every anyone who's who, who's in their world speaks about him as a guy who's just that's all he thinks about. He lives and dies by the, you know, like I, I'm I'm excited. One thing, yeah. one thing I was also impressed by was the fact that um, whenever he throws a punch, his head is off the center line, and that that was like one of the that was one of the biggest problems for um, for Hamanson. The fact that mm. Vittori wasn't really there to be hit whenever he would swing, but 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 what's his name? Um, Jack Hermanson was good at um, like fighting with pressure. Like when he would fight with pressure, with, with pressure, that's when he would like do some of his best work. But he saw he saw that you know he saw that there was a toll to pay you know at times as well. So I think that that kept him on a defensive like like just enough for Vittori to do the work that he was doing. Agreed. Well, speaking of head movement and hands, Jamal Hill. Oh my God, Jamal Hill, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna let one of on that one. That was crazy. That was crazy. What you what do you think, Jim? You know, I had him winning the fight um, to begin with because I knew he has incredible hands. So I knew he was going to win the fight. The question was, if OSP uses wrestling, would he be able to defend the takedowns? Would he be able to handle the wrestling and pressure of OSP? But his hands are so good. He didn't even, it didn't even have to go to the ground. You know, he just, like, boxed him mm-hmm. up. Like, straight hood, hood boxed him. You know, <laughs> like, that was a beautiful performance. And, man, um, bravo, bravo. And he looked I mean, striking was, low key kind of like shut down the fear of a yeah. takedown because OSP just didn't he didn't know what to do. He was overwhelmed. This man who again, like Hermanson, has fought the who's who. You name him, he's fought them. And it's just like hey, he looked he like it was his first day on the job. I mean, it was I mean crazy. Even John Jones tweeted about it. You saw him? John Jones was like, Jamal. <laughs> Yo. That was cool, man. I'm not gonna lie, I, I was I was impressed by that because that was like a. That's the first time like he got like a real like like noteworthy worthy opponent, you know. So for him to do that to a guy who who's who's actually known for getting getting battered sometimes and making a comeback, a guy who's super versatile, for him to <laughs> oh shit, oh this is gonna be good. <laughs> that is so yeah, clutch. To <laughs> that is so clutch. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys if you guys are tuning in, we just got joined um, again with Chris, right? This is our buddy who was yeah. Oh, yeah. in Columbia. He said lost in Columbia. Nah, I think Jamal Jamal Hill, like, um, that was impressive. The fact that he was able to, um, I don't remember what I was saying, but I think Jamal Chris, Hill. Chris <laughs> took you out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, J- Chris, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was crazy. But yeah, Jamal Hill like you said, like hood boxed him. And what I was also impressed by was the fact that he was able to handle like kind of, kind of his legs being beaten up and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he handled adversity. Not only did he, not only did he beat a, a worthy opponent, but he also handled adversity, which is something that I'm not used to seeing like hood fighters, yeah. hood fighters handle. Like I see Mexican <laughs> fighters handle like yeah, adversity yeah. very well. I see Brazilian fighters. I see what you call Hawaiians, but like that's not like like hood fighters. A lot of times they're they're willing to get into a fight, but they're not willing to get past adversity. So it was it was cool to see a guy who's actually a hood guy who's actually a dog. Like you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's an interesting way to put it. I like that. I like yeah, that. yeah. I just I'm still astounded about Jamal Hill's hands. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It's like I'm, I was watching him work, and like like you said, I remember sitting here and saying, "Don't let OSP chop your legs. This dude got running back legs. Don't let yeah. him kick <laughs> you like that, because it will be over quick. Yeah. All he needs is two or three of those good ones, and it's over. Like you have no power, yeah. and he's gonna take you down, and yeah. he's gonna do that magical choke of his, and it's over. You know, so yeah, it was it, that was the. You know, that too, like Jamal Hill also paced himself well. He didn't gas out. You know, he kind of paced, he, he fought at a really good pace, you know. Um, so he, to me, he's showing that he's one of the dangers, like dark horses now in that division. He's still undefeated still too. So, you know, let's see what he does in the future. But he has to learn, he has to learn how to really check those kicks because if you go against a guy, if you go against a guy like Rackage, oh my, oh my God. God. <laughs> like rackage yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god! Like you like, saw when he cause... kicked him, he was real. He was real animated about yeah. it, but he didn't. He didn't really adjust. He was just doing so much that overwhelmed OSP. So he's yeah. lucky in yeah. a sense, you know. But he, he one hundred percent, he needs to check those because if he's relying on these, once those get taken out, it's over. These ain't nothing. No, that's that's a that's a fact because the thing is his leg was compromised. Yeah. But you could tell it was like a kind of thing where he was just like, I'm going to tough this out. But there's certain fighters that if you take a few of those, you can't tough it out. Like it's your leg is just going to go down. And, and that's just what it is. It doesn't matter how tough you are. That leg is just going to, it's just going to break or it's going to do whatever it's going to do. And you're just going to fall and that's it. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Jordan Levet, the monkey King. Let's let's talk about that's, that. That's a, that's a slam guy, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh my god. Like it's, so when this when this fight happened, I I I almost I knew Levitt was gonna win. Only because uh I just not that I have no faith in Wyman, I just think Wyman's on his like downturn. So it's like and this guy, I mean, shit. I, it, it's hard <laughs> to like you know, when you watch this fight in the contender series and everything like that, you know, his frame is like perfect for my, you know his frame reminds me of Benson Henderson. Remember Benson Henderson? Yeah. He had those real thick legs, you know, that long advent, but like he was just solid everywhere. You could see that this guy is going to be able to take anything you get, yeah. you know? He's he's super energetic. He looks like he could go 10 rounds if he wanted to, you know? And he's just super humble, almost like a Uriah Hall kind of emotional thing. That's kind of scares me a little bit, but, you know, like when they start, he was like, best of luck to you. And then like he saw how like hurt he was and he got real... <laughs> But that slam, the way he, like, when he grabbed him, and you see immediately he walks over to his coach, walks him over. You see, you hear him say, where are you? Because he can't see over his shoulder. And then he <laughs> got there, just put the thing in. Bah! I mean, I've never even, I've never heard the, the, the floor of the cage sound like that. Matt, I've never heard it yeah. sound like that. I mean, I was genuinely, immediately worried. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I couldn't even enjoy the knockout at first because I saw Wyman just. The reaction, yeah. I was, oh my, it reminded me when Uriah Hall was in The Ultimate Fighter and what he did to Sam, yeah. I believe his name is. Oh yeah. my God. It, it was it was scary. I'm glad Wyman is good money. I immediately yeah. went on Instagram on Dana White's um, live. He went live and he was saying that Wyman's all right. He got up, whatever, because I was like, oh man. He was down for a while. Uh, jo- jo- Levitt's scary. It's scary because yeah. he, he, he he's terrifying and real nice at the same time. You know? Well, here's the thing about him. That was my <laughs> first. That was my first time ever seeing him fight. So, like, um, I, I felt like like when he when he slammed him, and then I saw I didn't even see the beginning of the fight. Like like the beginning, like like when they're introducing them. I just saw the actual fight. So when he slammed him, and I saw his reaction to slamming him, I was like, man, there's something weird about this guy. Like like he just he's he's just like um he's almost like a silent like a silent killer or something. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I, I don't really know his personality, but I know like that was just off the wall. The fact that like he knew what he was gonna do, like he framed him. It was so simple. It's like it's like it's like Hamzat when Hamzat went up to um, Mirshad and just he just walked up to him and just punched him. Like it was no resistance. So yeah. he just picked this guy. He just picked this guy up, framed him, and slammed him. And that that's all it was. That's it. So, so, so stuff like that always blows my mind. Like when someone just <clears throat> has a fight and then just just gets into a fight with a high level opponent, and they have zero resistance. Here's the thing: that, about, that's insane. You know, you, this is my first time seeing him fight too. But the UFC had like a you know like a a short a short feature on him. You know, Monkey King, like like basically. And I, I'm like, this guy is very quirky. He's very odd. He's very you know kind of unique personality. So I was rooting for him because of that, you know. He came out singing that, that weird song. He's singing along, playing air guitar. I'm like, so he has a really odd personality, yep. but he's a very smart guy too. So when you watch this grappling in those highlights, he has high level grappling, good control, good fight IQ. So seeing that makes me more excited now for that division too. Like this year of COVID has had some of the best moments and a lot of great new fighters, a lot of great new energy coming into the UFC. This is probably the most excited, exciting UFC has been in a long time. It's crazy, what are, right? Is what, are, like... what are what are what are his other skits? Like, does he? The, how's he a, as a striker? He's good. He's solid. I mean, we don't know much about him because we just had him in the contender series. So, yeah. I mean, I only saw his fight in the contender series, which is insane. Yeah. I mean, he 
beat the brakes off that dude. Yeah. It's crazy. And then does a split and starts twerking in the game. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just I I love it because no matter which way we no matter which way you do it, I mean personality kind of matters when you're in the prize fighting thing. You know, yeah. like yes, yeah. we're fight fans. We want to see the fights. You know, like no matter what, like. We don't go to Khabib to laugh and get entertained. We go to Khabib because we want to see him smash people, yeah. you know? So it's like, but they, everybody has their little things. But the fact that this guy has that personality about him is what excites me even more about what he can do in the cage, you know? Because we, we don't even know his potential yet, you know? And that's the exciting thing. I, 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 want, him, I want him to get a really quick turnaround because he literally yeah. took zero damage. Yeah. Zero. He picked him it's up, kind of- walked him over, and slammed him. Fight yeah. over. It's kind of scary. It's kind of scary to think that um, the UFC is getting so high level that they're cutting people like UL Romero. Because think, and, and 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 thing is, it's actually justified to a certain degree because look, <laughs> look, look how many high level fighters we've seen in multiple divisions just in the COVID era. Yeah. So 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 just imagine watching MMA like a year from now, two years from now, everyone's gonna look like every like MMA fight at some point is gonna look like. Like we're watching Mortal Kombat or like Tekken or like something like an actual yeah. video game. But Think that's the whole like some, there, there were some the video game moments. There have been video game moments like every week. Yeah, yeah. That was the dream of MMA. It yep. started as style versus style, but the real dream of it once they got um, regulated and got everything going was that they wanted the most complete fighters. The whole point is you want the most complete human being fighters on the planet going at each other. You don't want no plus or minus 5,000 favorites. That's, leave that yeah. for boxing and their crazy yeah, yeah. asses. This is MMA. You want the best of the best going at each other. And I mean, it's really, ha- it's starting to really, really happen now. Like really happen. And I think that's why he's, he feels safe in getting rid of someone like Yoel. We all love Yoel. Jesus Christ, yeah. I love that man. I mean, I, I wish him all the best. I hope he continues to fight in another, if he wants to, you know. He, does, he hasn't really taken the type of damage that tells me that he can't fight in his 40s, you yeah. know? So I think he's all right. But I also understand Dana because Dana more and more, especially during this COVID time where all these young guys are killing it right now yeah. and have yeah. the opportunity to kill it because most of our, what we're taking in is in social media and stuff like that. And who's better than that? The young guys and they're killing it, you know? And you all lost four of his last fights. Yeah. Four of his last five fights. So it's like, you know, I'm not mad at Dana for doing it, you know? I... I I think Yoel had more to give. I don't think yeah. Yoel is going to win the belt. And I think that's, you know, I think that's safe to say. I don't think Yoel's winning the belt in the UFC. Yeah. But Yoel could be a problem in Bellator or something like that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know so what about, yeah. Well, no, well what were you going to say? Um, Dana White said that he might cut over 60 fighters, I think. Like 60 yep. fighters, Mike. So something like that. Yeah. That's, that's and he's got, he's got a lot of fighters on the come up. That's why. Man. Also goes back to, and, I, and I'm going to bring it up every time, is that we need that 165 yeah. uh, weight division. Yeah, They need to move well to weight to 175, put the 165, you have an extra division, you have everything 10 pounds apart. You love this whole double champ idea, that's just going to create more. That's going to create more buzz and more people. You can fit more people in your roster and it's just going to get better after that. Yeah. I don't understand why he's so opposed to it. Just like I don't understand why he's so opposed to half filled arenas. You saying yeah. you missed the crowd and all this stuff? Like, look, look. Did you watch Spence Jr. and and Garcia last night? <laughs> nah, I gotta watch it. that. Some of it. Yo, as soon as we get off of here, I'm gonna watch that. The yeah. vibe was amazing. The vibe, the production was great. They had they, the 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 arena was halfway filled and it felt amazing. The camera work was dope. The fight was great. That was Spence Jr. Jesus, the man. He shut he shut it down. And I love Danny Swift. That's my guy. But yeah, he had nothing for him. He had nothing for him. <laughs> but let's let's go to um. I want to talk about Dolidze, Roman Dolidze, okay. and, um, um, and John Allen. Dolidze and John Allen. Allen. Yeah, yeah. So when when that when I first heard about this fight, I I remember Dolidze. Only for, negative reason, unfortunately, is that before he got to UFC, he had gotten suspended for a year because he had pop for quite a few substances in his system. <laughs> yeah. Quite a few. So when you see a man get popped for that much stuff in the system and every fight he's winning by like first round, second round KO, it's just like, ugh. it's yeah, hard to like yeah, yeah. push myself behind somebody. And I was like, but he did his time, you know, he got you sort of up his ass now. So, you know, he's yeah. not really doing anything, even though he still has a freakish amount of muscle. But that was a, that was a pretty, Decent fight, man. You know, that was a good back and forth battle. John Allen was giving it to him at some points. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, ah. they, they were pretty. They were they were pretty evenly matched. You know, it was a good back and forth. Stylistically, it, it was a good back and forth, in my opinion. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. I don't think anyone really lost that fight. You know. Yeah. I'm curious to see how Dolce moves forward. You know, now that Usada's in his back pocket, because you know fighters pre Usada and post Usada are very different people. So, I'm curious. If, I mean, if if he maintains the same, because he's a monster. Yeah. You know, he's a freaking monster, man. And John Allen doesn't matter that he lost. I know he's 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 got a lot coming forward too. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, the only thing I really had to talk about on that was the steroid use because it's been on my mind. I wanted to share it with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I have this thing where, like, if if you've been on a tear, and then it's not like he popped for pictograms like my man John Jones, yeah. no, leave him alone, yeah. everybody. Yeah. He's like, he had a ton of shit in his system. You yeah. know, it was like, like the guy that was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua that that had to back out, and then um the, the Mexican dude came in, the, the black dude from, from Brooklyn. Yeah. He popped for so much stuff, you know, and it's just like it's hard for me to rally behind someone like that. But yeah, like I said, he did his time. He stays clean. And hopefully, I wish him well. I, I mean, got some good fights between both those dudes in the future. So I'm excited for that one. What did you guys think about um, these? These were these were the okay. So these were the last three that I thought were like big standout fights. So the Taporia fight, Taporia the oh. fight, yeah. Mocha yeah. fight and the Benitez Benitez um fight. Like where he where he where he where he um finished the guy with the knee with the yeah. knee to the body. Yeah. Mowgli. Yeah. That was that you know, so, Mowgli makes me think of a lot of a figure though. The way he fights, he's real tight, he's real solid. Like yeah. everything he throws, you know it's gonna hurt. Like figure though, you know, so it's like I, I got I got excited for that guy. I mean he's gonna he's gonna come up quick. His yeah. next opponent is gonna be in a lot of pain. And he's gonna we're talking, about, to we're talking about Benitez, right? Benitez, Mowgli, yeah. Yeah. I, I know him as Mowgli because isn't that the jungle book guy? The kid? Mowgli. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I called the, the one I call the jungle book um guy is um Royville. No, no, the Benitez nickname is Mowgli. Yeah, oh, okay. And got isn't it, that the kid's it, name it. in the jungle yeah. book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. That is. That's crazy. Nah, he's a savage, man. Yeah. I, I mean, see a lot of bigger day than him. So I, I'm excited. Anything having to do with figuring it, I'm excited about. So, God, I can't wait for next week for that fight. Yeah, I think yeah. he's. I think he's yeah. a little. Um, I think he's a little more fluid than than Figueredo, But I can see what you're saying. Like yeah. he 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 throws more. I think he throws more volume. And... I think yeah. he throws more volume in combinations. But but I can see what you're saying though. Like he's just like a, he's just like a mano a mano like. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, who's... he's he's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Smoker, holy shit! I was surprised at that performance. You know, because as was I. Yeah, as yeah. Was I. <laughs> I mean, well, the thing. Go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead. What I want to say about Smoker is that Smoker, like, even though he was losing, like in the beginning, he was losing for like the first round. He was losing all the way up to the point where he actually, where he got the guy down. But the thing is, you got to look at the energy that's behind the person that's losing. The energy that he had was like, he was relentless and he was never taking a step back. So when you got a guy like that, if the other guy is not 100% game and sharp at, at all times, at some point the tides are going to turn. And that's what happened. And Smoker was, when Smoker got him down, that was just the momentum hitting at that point yeah and Quinones is no slouch man. it's, yeah, it's yeah. specifically what who he did it to that has me like holy shit this dude Oof. he stepped his that game was, up that was a fun fun one yo this there's so much talent coming forward bro this is like this when you're a fight <laughs> fan like you're yeah. not like a like a person that just watches it to a watch casual, people, yeah. like <laughs> like the Jorge Masvidal's of the world. Shout yeah. out to Jorge, but like if you judge for those guys, this, I mean, this is when you're a fight fan. These guys, I'm I'm like I'm I'm shaking. I'm shaking. Next, <laughs> yeah. is it next? Is next week two fifty six? Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, but wait, yeah. two fifty six. Um, Ferguson's on that, right? 
Yep. Ferguson Oliveira. They get Angel Oliveira. Moreno are going to yep. make history, first off. Two guys with very similar fight styles that just fought three weeks ago. The quickest, by far, turnaround title fight in the history of MMA. And then Tony Ferguson and Oliveira is your co-main. And then you have I mean, JDS. Like, yeah. And then you have JDS versus uh, Gain. You have Kevin Holland. Versus Cyril versus- Gain, who yeah. I love that guy, bro. You got Holland post yeah. COVID ready to take it to the old man, you know? Oh my gosh, bro. Cup Swanson is fighting too. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So how so how do you think how do you think um so okay, what do you think is gonna what, I want you guys to make a prediction. What do you think is gonna happen? If Holland if Holland gets through Jacare, do you think he's gonna fight Marvin Vittori or do you think mm. Marvin Vittori and Paulo and Paulo Costa are gonna get uh, matched up? It, it's it's hard because Vittori was the one that called out Borrachina. But then at the press conference, he's like, fuck Borrachina. He's yeah. like, he got knocked out his last fight. Yeah, yeah. And then he starts saying, I want a title shot. And I'm just like, I feel you, brother. You ain't getting it, but I feel yeah. you. <laughs> but it's like, <clears throat> I yeah. think personally the next title shot should be Whitaker. I think Whitaker is in like an Engano standpoint. He put in his work. He lost his, ti- he lost his title. He put in his work. I think he deserves another shot at the champ. I'm going to keep it a buck. I mean, the thing about Whitaker is that I, I I agree with you, but Whitaker doesn't really care that much. And Whitaker is, Whitaker is not I disagree. rushing to get into I disagree. It. No, no, what I'm saying is, okay, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Right now, Whitaker is prioritizing, like, his kid and everything like that. His family. So it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not as urgent for him to get a title shot um, personally as it is for... Um, I, you know, I still am going to disagree with you. Because okay, if you ahead. know anything about Robert Whitaker, Robert Whitaker's a real chill, humble dude, but he's a he's low key an animal, right? But every time after his fight, right directly after his fight, you'll never hear him talk about I want to get back in there, I'm ready to go, and this and that. He's not that kind of guy. After his fight, he's always gonna sound like that. He's always gonna be like, Yeah, I just want to go see my daughter, I want to go see my family, this and that. Every single time. And then when the media started with the hey, Robert doesn't want to fight, Dana was like, Hey, Robert don't want to fight, I'll get somebody else, cool. That he had to take social media. He went on Ariel 180 show and he was just like, you guys need to stop. I never said I don't want to fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said yeah. I want to go spend Christmas with my family. Yeah, That's all yeah. I said. I <laughs> want my title back. Yeah. You just got to, you got to, after post-fight, you got to just take what Robert says with a grain of salt. Because at post-fight, Robert's a family man. He just want to go home. He want to talk to you, answer your stupid questions and go home. But Robert yeah, but wants I'm not- that title. I promise you that. He wants his belt back. He wants Izzy yeah. again. And Robert is mistaken. the type of, of, I'm sorry, to dis, but it's like, Robert is the type more than anyone to adjust his game plan. This man is a smart dude. I mean, like, just off the rip, what he did to Yoel is enough for me to say, like, this man deserves it again. I, I, I truly feel he's going to adjust his game. I don't, obviously don't think he's going to win. I don't think Jesus Christ can beat Izzy right now. <laughs> but I think, I think he's going to adjust and he's going to put up a hell of a fucking fight for Izzy potentially even a decision. So it's like, mm. I think he deserves it. Just like I think they need to get Steve and Ngannou together already and stop playing my man, you know? Because yeah. Ngannou's I mean, going to lose his to shit. Steve He's going to go up in the UFC executive office and beat yeah. the shit out of all of them that's to get his contract, you know? They're going to get, yeah. they're going to get pissing off the wrong guy here. Yeah. So I don't know. That, yeah, I mean, that's why I think she get the next title fight. But I like the whole, if Kevin Holland wins, I like that. Match him up with with Vittori, right? Yeah, I like that. But that's interesting. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That's an interesting matchup, actually. I didn't even think about that at first. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you're a little mastermind there. I see you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> you you picked my coffee like that cup. That meme. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, savage, savage. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta no, get one you, of those. You, you, should, you should see Jim's mask. Like, like, like one of these days, <laughs> it'll, re- it'll reveal it. <laughs> but anyway, yo, so um, real quick. Um, oh yeah, we, yo, we forgot to mention one guy. Just, um, Tamoria, Tamoria. Oh my, Tamoria. Yeah. Do you see the level of striking? The 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 volume he was putting on him. The body shots. Yo. The head shots. The the leg kicks. That was yo. a beautiful display of martial arts. That, that was that was art. That was art. <laughs> that was art. That was that was quick art. But that yeah. was art. And the way he Yo, dropped I'm not gonna too? lie. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. When he hit him with the uh, with the with the body shot, 
um like 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 i i almost threw up like i almost threw up like like i i, I felt that in my soul you know what i'm saying like that was yeah. insane and then yeah. and the combination just i feel like uh is it is it lightweight or featherweight damn that was ridiculous man that combination was just was just brutal yeah featherweight Featherweight, featherweight, right? Featherweight, featherweight. Yeah. Oh, God. Speaking of featherweight, that... did you see Henry Cejudo working out on social media saying, nah. Volkanovski, I'm coming for you? <laughs> <laughs> like, is is he coming back or not? Because I low-key want Cejudo back, bro. Is he trolling <laughs> it? Like, I mean, like... I high-key want him back. <laughs> Yo, high-key. High-key, man. Yo, these, these weight classes are stacking up brody and stacking up with new blood which is what i love you know i love it there's just there's just so much man I'm... and think about this right now mma mma is so good right now that covid is fucking up crazy main events and we're still highly engaged yeah <laughs> yeah like i didn't realize when until this started because um uh, I had a friend here, and she was. I was telling her, "There's, a, there's Montana de la Rosa fighting the this chick," and she's like, "I don't see any girl fight here." And I was like, "What?" And then I didn't realize three of the fights got taken up. We had three that's, prelim yeah. fights. That's why. That's why I'm glad that we didn't do the early predictions because um, during COVID now, a lot of times we do a prediction, and next thing you know, the fight is off the card. <laughs> so like, yeah. it's a little weird. It, it, it bugged me out because I think it was Tapuria when they were um, interviewing him. And they were like, um, as he's talking, you know, John Anik will say something, I guess, while he was saying something by mistake, whatever. And I'm like, Anik, you got three fights. Yeah, yeah. Two hours. <laughs> yeah. Let the man say yeah. what he wants. <laughs> you got all the time in the world. Yeah. Now. It so it was weird. Now, next week, I think we should watch all the fights because even the early prelims is really good. The early now, prelims. I, I always watch all the fights. Yeah, yeah. Like early prelims, prelims, and main card. It's all really good. So um, I'm excited ab about that card. I really Yo, am. Who who you think is getting the uh, fight of the night? Like, oh, who, who you man. think is gonna like? What do you think is gonna be the shine of the night? The shine. Uh, all the it's, it's gonna, you, you're you're ready. All right. So basically, you, I'm I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna agree with this, but I'm gonna say Brandon Moreno Brandon and Figueredo. <laughs> but as as easily as it's to say, Ferguson Oliveira. Oh, okay. Ferguson okay, really speak well. his body of work, his last twelve fights, how they ended, speaks for itself. I mean, every I one gonna... of them was lighter because they lost blood, they lost weight. Yeah, you know, like it's just like. I think the the thing about that fight is, I think he's gonna break. Um, I think Tony Ferguson is gonna break Oliveira. Now that I think about it, mm. but as far Moreno as how, and what do you mean Figueredo, break, break how? I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna break him with just cardio, with just cardio. sheer cardio and just like just volume. I think, I think Oliveira and Ferguson is gonna be a grappling match. I think Oliveira is gonna take him to the ground because Oliveira's bread and butter is jujitsu. This, this, this few men better than him at that. He's yeah. really gonna. I mean, his that. hands Ferguson are nasty. He loves hundred percent, hundred percent. So it's Ferguson. You know. Ferguson has late. Ferguson has blades for gloves, bro. Like it's no yeah. joke. So Not, I, I think, uh, but I think it's going to be a grappling match, just like I think Figueredo and Moreno is going to be a grappling match. Okay, Figueredo and, and Moreno. That's that's like that's like a David and Goliath kind of thing. You know, so what I'm saying. And and um um man, Brandon Moreno's a dog, bro. He's a dog. Yeah. If you're a betting man, if you're a betting man, <laughs> Brandon is the underdog. That's the pretty good bet. So, so, so better. <laughs> hundred percent, hundred. Because as much as we know, figured it was an assassin. That yeah, it can go either way. Yeah, yeah, it can go either way. Because Moreno's not backing down. He's not. Moreno's gonna bring it to him. You know, oh, Moreno cool. has. He's beasting for that. Like how both of them after that fight was like, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> we got this thing in December. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, I love it, bro. Like that's the mentality oh. that I like in fighters. You know, I'm ready whenever. Not, oh, man, yeah, I, I don't know, you know. You know, I want to go home and, and be vacation for a while. Listen, you're a fighter. Like, do you want to be a legend? <laughs> but it also depends. It depends what, what level, too. Because yeah, once you yeah. get to, like, like Masvidal type of money, it's like, do I need to fight every month? 
I'm on this yacht with like 18 perfect women. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'm going to fight next one. Yeah. <laughs> I need a couple <laughs> martinis. <laughs> you think? Yo. How do you think um, if if Holland wins? How do you think he wins? Uh, Against Jacare. I think I think I think he win, I think he wins um, with his hands. Yeah, same here. I think he wins with his hands. I think he I think he has crazy precision, and I think he he fights. Um, he uses very good movement, so I think he's gonna catch. Um, what's his name? I'm gonna um, say something crazy. I'm gonna say he submits him. Possibly. And that's not an easy thing to do with Jacare. But I think. Holland Yo, side wants, note, side note. To... We got side note. We got one minute left. All right. But Last I think Holland statement. wants to make a statement, and I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna submit him. All right. Thank you guys. Tune in next week for the predictions and the for this crazy fight card. Oh my god! I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Later. Peace out. This is fun. Peace Take out, care, everybody. All right. You too, man.